let's assume you have a list of data and you want to find something in that list of data. This could be primitives as we have here, such as a list of strings, or you could have a list of objects, anything of that nature that you want to filter, uh, not filter, but just find a particular item in the list. How can you go about doing that? Of course, you could use a for loop. However, there's also built-in utilities in the Kotlin standard library. So what we're gonna have is I'm gonna create a result variable. And then what I wanna do is I wanna actually find uh, the first instance, excuse me, names.find. I wanna find the first instance of Dawn. So let's go ahead and say it equal, equals Dawn. And then I wanna go ahead and print out if I actually found it. So print ln and result. And I'm gonna go ahead and run that. And then what we're going to see here is that we have Don that was returned. That's what we expect, Don was in there. Now, however, there is a kind of a gotcha here. So let's just throw something in here we know doesn't exist and let's run it again. So I'm gonna use the word foobar. Now we have the word foobar. Of course, we're gonna get back null. Now we kind of had a some help from, from Kotlin to find this here. So we had find, I was gonna find the first one. Um, and if I actually look at this, what it's gonna do is it returns the first element matching the given predicate or null if no element is found. So find kind of helps you, but now you have to start worrying about null values at all times. So if you're gonna do a null value, you say, so if you wanna comp compare something, result equal equals, or you say result dot length, well, now you're gonna get a problem here because it's saying, uh, this is a null variable, so you need to check to see if it's null first. You may have heard too that Kotlin will protect you from null pointer exceptions and doesn't allow you to do nulls. Well, that's false as you can see here, we can use a null. However, I prefer to use things like first. Now first will actually give me the actual value first of Dawn. And so if we run this here, I'm always get, it's telling me like I'm always going to get a variable back. Now if I run this, I'll say result.length, it'll be four because Don has four characters in it. Now, the real interesting part comes in here. It equals equals foobar, which we know foobar does not exist in this list, but if we run it again, what we're gonna see is we're gonna get an exception from Kotlin, and that's the no such element exception. If we look at the implementation of first here, it says it returns the first element matching or it'll throw an exception. So this is something you need to be aware of. And I prefer to use this method because now I actually have a string that's gonna be returned if it's found. Now, but what if I don't, what if I wanna find the first or the null value? I feel that's a decision I need to make because I need to be able to read the code and know that, hey, I'm either gonna get the first one or the or null value because that gives me context into understanding what's happening in my code. As regards to find, it does make sense, but it's not as obvious. It's not in your face. So first has also one called first or null. So I'm gonna take first or null. And now again, we get back a string here that's gonna be empty. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take that off there just cause it's not gonna work. And we'll print it and we'll see it says null. Now, of course, I could do the null operator check. Let's give me the null safety check uh, dot length. Uh, otherwise, I could just go ahead and do something else, you know, do that. Uh, that should work. And there we go. We get back null because there's no values there. So I can find the first of a, I can find the first instance. So, so what this also means is if I have another instance of Don in here. Well, actually, no, let me say this to say, you know, um, Donovan. Let's say we have Donovan in here, right? And I wanna see the first instance of, watch, so I always say first, of dot contains, so we'll say dot two lowercase, dot contains uh, Don, right? So I wanna find the first one that it's gonna find in that list. So what is it gonna find? Well, it's not gonna find anything. So let's go back to the result here. I'm just gonna get rid of the length first it dot two lowercase contains Don. And that's not gonna work, so I have a capital D there. We'll run that, and now we'll get back Don. But we actually have two instances in here. So what if I wanted to return the last instance? We can do last. So there's a last operator, we can find the last instance of a list, Donovan. So there's many different things we can do inside of here. We can find names.index of, and what we're gonna see here, index of first, index of last, so I can get the index of the first, and what is that gonna return? That should return us a zero. And if I do index of last, 
can do index of last. It'll show me the last value here. And then of course, if I were to throw something in here in X, Y, Z, what do we think would happen here? We're gonna get negative one, so it's not found. So if you look at the implementation of that, or negative one, if the list does not contain such an element. And this is all within the Kotlin standard library. So there's a number of things that we can do to find values inside of here. And just like we had the last before, we also have last or null. So we can also take last or null as well. So we'll just change this back to Don. And we'll see the last or null returns us back with Donovan. And then if you know we have Don X, which there's nothing in there with Don X in there, it will return null. So we've got a null value at that point in time. Now, the great thing about it is I can read this code six months down the line and understand that I'm filtering the names list and I wanna find the last value or give me null. And then at that point, I know exactly what to expect at this point. I'm either gonna have the value or I'm gonna have null and I need to plan for that accordingly. Now, thankfully, Kotlin's not going to allow me to just print the length of this because this is a nullable type. And I need to basically say, hey, what happens if this is null? And I'll just provide the null safety operator, which says, hey, if this is null, just return null. Otherwise, give me the length. That's what that means.